All right, coming up on today's show, I'm going to address the one question that Bears fans aren't asking nearly enough, at least in my opinion. I'm not saying it's never been discussed or thrown out there with all the excitement of the soft season, but I think this question is like, do we actually know an answer? I would say pretty clearly we do not have an answer. So we're going to dive into that here on Chicago Bears now. I want to hear it from you guys first. Maybe some of you guys do have this question. What is your biggest question heading into this season? 2024. There's a million ways you could go. I want to hear from you guys. What is your biggest question heading into this season? It is Chicago Bears now. I am Harrison Graham. These, I would say, are like the three most commonly asked questions. Well, can you win with the rookie quarterback? Is Caleb Williams going to work? The Bears QB history. Is he the guy? Like, that is a fair and legitimate question. Number two, is the pass rush good enough? You have Montez Sweat, but you need to go sign someone else. Is Demarcus Walker, Jervon Dexter, are these guys enough uh, to be that true elite, elite defense because you have a great back seven? Uh, and then obviously the offensive line, still questions there. Can that group hold up? Is a Coleman Shelton or a Ryan Bates a clear upgrade at center? Does Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright take steps as your two tackles? Trenches, rookie QB, those are legitimate questions. No doubt about it. Uh, completely legitimate and ones that aren't clear, to be frank. But I still think that the biggest question of all is this guy. You can see my finger pointing at him. Matt Eberflus. Can you win at a high level? I don't just mean like 9-8, and eight, sneak into the playoffs, whatever. And look, this year that wouldn't be a bad result. But I think big picture, is Matt Eberflus a head coach you can make deep runs with? I like one fluky run, like a consistent playoff team, and ultimately win a Super Bowl. That is a question we just simply do not know. I mean, you look at Eberflus's resume as the Bears head coach, 3-14 and 14 his first year, lost his final 10 games. 7-10 and 10 in year two, started 0-4, which means this team endured a 14-game losing streak with them. Sure, finished 7-6, and 7-10 and 10 overall. That was a solid finish last year. But bottom line is you're 10-24 and 24 as a head coach. Yes, you're rebuilding. I get all that. Um, 10, two and ten against the North, zero oh and four against the Packers. The, the the quite honest, truthful answer is we just simply do not know. We do not know if Matt Eberflus is a Fetty guy. That's like a, what the kids say. Is he a Fetty guy? Like you hear this with NBA players all the time. Like is Jason Tatum a Fetty guy? And that means when the Fetty's falling out from the rafters from the stadium and someone's crowned a champion. Is that guy going to be victorious? Like is Flus a guy when the confetti falls down from the sky? someone that you envision winning a Super Bowl. Who knows? Um, what we do know, I think, is this. Matt Eberflus is a good defensive coordinator. And last year, he was the head coach, but he also called the defense. And him taking over the defense and calling the plays looked good. It was much better than we ever saw anything under Allen Williams. It looked even better when you got Montez Sweat. In other words, you need premium players, you need pass rushers. But even before that... The defense in 23 was much better than 2022. I, I don't think there's any question. Bluce knows what he's doing in terms of running a defense and calling plays on Sunday. I think that is pretty, pretty clear. Before we get to the next thing, if you want daily content for free, look no further. Subscribe to Chicago Bears now. We're trying to get to 100,000 subs here on the channel. Get that YouTube plaque. That would be dope if you guys could help us get there. So if you want daily videos for free, hit that sub button. Number two, what else do we know? Players vouch for Matt Eberflus, and they have and they continue to. So they like him. I think that's pretty obvious. Um, and I think something that impressed me is you start 0-4 last year. You've lost 14 games in a row. Not every player on that team had lost 14 in a row. Some new players, obviously. But a lot of guys have lost 14 in a row. That is almost a full season worth. They could have turned on him. They could have just – that message could have grown stale. But they stayed the course, and they continue to listen to his message – uh, and they rallied to finish 7-6, and six, and had they, you know, not collapsed in a couple of those games last season, they might have been a playoff team. So, like, he kept the team together. I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. Cole Komet, in particular, has been vocal about how Flus has been a guy that the guys have rallied around. So, uh, I think that uh, he deserves credit for that. And then number three, and perhaps the most significant, or maybe this will end up being a deterrent to Ryan Poles, is he believes in him wholeheartedly. He is stuck by flus throughout, you know, mostly downs through two years. Let's be honest. 
you lose 14 in a row, that's hard to that's hard to come back from. Like I would love to know how many coaches in history that have won a Super Bowl what their longest losing streak is. I feel pretty confident in saying none of them have lost 14 games in a row as a head coach. Maybe I'm wrong. If you guys have a stat that shows me otherwise, uh, please prove me wrong. But uh, I feel pretty confident in that. And Ryan Poles has never wavered in this guy. Um, he talks about you guys don't see the day-to-day, the leadership that this guy brings. And I will say this, late last season, certainly the soft season, I don't know if it's the new look or what, Flew seems more comfortable as the head coach. I felt like the first year and a half and almost first full two seasons, like, couldn't even get to a press conference smoothly. Now it's like he's happy-go-lucky. He's just he's hanging out. He's just one of the guys. It's, it's not overwhelming for him. So that doesn't mean they're going to win on Sundays. We have no idea if he's a good head coach yet. Um, I hope he is. I hope he becomes one. I hope this team wins with him because ultimately I want to win a Super Bowl, and he's the coach right now, so I'd like to see him do it. But be honest with me. Can you envision the Bears winning a Super Bowl with Matt Eberflus as the head coach? Like, when the confetti is falling down, is he the coach getting rained on by that confetti? Type Y for yes, type N for no, and go above and beyond and tell me why you think he can or why you think he cannot be a Super Bowl winning coach with this football team. We'll continue here, but first, I do want to tell you about our deal of the day. Caleb Williams jerseys available for order. Chatsports.com slash Caleb. Pick your guys up one right now. That link is going to be in the comments and in the description of the video. Chatsports.com slash Caleb. If you want to get a Caleb Williams jersey, don't waste any time. Do it now. Chatsports.com slash Caleb. What I'll say is this. 2024, in terms of that question that I just asked you guys, Ike will be very telling. Not because he needs to win a Super Bowl this year. That's ludicrous. Had to even make the playoffs yet. But to that point, if you don't even make the playoffs this year with the defensive pieces you have in place, with the offensive skill talent, unless Caleb Williams is just so far in over his head that there was nothing Flus and this staff could do, which I just don't think that's going to be the case, like this will be a telling year. Can you close out football games? Something you couldn't do last year. Like, can you do the little things to make an impact as a head coach on game days. So I think other than running the defense last year, which obviously had an impact, the little just typical head coach stuff, clock management, knowing when to challenge, those type of things, I think those are those are real question marks still. So um, I think this is a very critical year for Matt Eberflus, whether he's on the hot seat or not, into convincing this fan base like, hey, this is the right guy moving forward. Because look, last six years in the NFL, the final four teams, so AFC Championship, NFC Championship game. Last year, three offensive head coaches. The fourth one was John Harbaugh, a very established coach. who's not even necessarily defense. He's just more neutral, CEO type. Okay. Year before, all four offensive head coaches. Every team that made the championship game was an offensive head coach. And usually, by the way, these offensive head coaches are also the play cars, so pretty notable. 2021, same deal. All four offensive head coaches. 2020, three of the four offensive head coaches. 2019, three of the four offensive head coaches. 2018, three three of the four offensive head coaches. I mean, you think about the very, very successful teams in this league. They're an offensive head coach, quarterback combination, and typically that head coach calls the plays as well. Andy Reid and Mahomes, he calls the plays. Uh, Kyle Shanahan and Purdy, he calls the plays. I mean, Detroit, Campbell doesn't call the plays, but he has an offensive background, and Ben Johnson has been able to stay there pretty established. Josh Allen, the Bills, kind of an exception. McDermott's a defensive guy, but he does come from the Andy Reid coaching tree, so he's been around an elite offensive guy. Uh, Lamar Jackson, John Harbaugh, it's a little different again, but that's an established organization. Um, You know, the Eagles have been a little up and down, but their successful years, Doug Peterson, uh, Carson Wentz, offense, offense. Um, You know, Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, uh, along with Shane Steichen, offense. Like, this league is offense first. Now, you got to be a good defense to win a Super Bowl. Like, the Chiefs last year had an unreal defense. Like, it doesn't mean you can't have – you can have a bad defense and win, to win a Super Bowl. But it's kind of – the proof is kind of in the pudding. The champions these days, their offenses are elite, and their head coach – or play car, head coach, QB combo is top tier. So, what does this all mean? If your head coach isn't an offensive guy – and the play car, Reed, Shanahan, McVay, who I didn't even mention, uh, who's elite, obviously. You better have a top-tier quarterback, 
and your play caller better be good. And the reason defensive-minded head coaches don't last, even if you do have that top-tier head coach, typically, is because you're losing your play caller all the time. Like, if the Bears are awesome this year, Shane Waldron might be a head coach somewhere else next year. Doesn't mean Flus can't be here for 15 years and go on 12 playoff runs, but I just think the path is difficult. It's harder. So this Waldron-Caleb pairing is absolutely critical. Not only for this team's success, but really for Matt Eberflus's longevity. And if he can be a Super Bowl winning head coach, because the offense is going to have to be good. The quarterback has to be top tier. If you don't have that, you got no shot. You got no shot of winning at the highest level in this league. And you certainly don't have a high level of a chance to win year in and year out if you do not have that. So with all that in mind, should Matt Eberflus enter 2024 on the hot seat? Type 1 for yes, type 0 for no. Logic would say it should at least be a warm seat. I get they finished last year pretty well. But I don't think his seat is hot for a couple of reasons. One, Ryan Poles has continued to go out of his way to vouch for him. <coughs> and that's probably a Poles decision. And two, you just drafted a rookie quarterback, the number one overall pick. You've made the mistake in the past of drafting a QB high and firing your head coach and resetting after his rookie season. Even if I'm skeptical about Flus's long-term longevity here as a high-level head coach, I think you almost have to give this at least two years with Caleb, unless this year is just a disaster. Like the defense takes a step back, they're losing ugly games. Like, okay, you go five and twelve, yeah, he's gonna get fired. But if they go eight and nine or something like that, I don't think he's gonna get fired. So I think Flus has a lot to prove. I think this year's a critical year, not necessarily I'm gonna get fired unless I do this year. But it is critical, especially if you want to convince the fan base that you can win a Super Bowl with this guy. And I, that, I think that's the biggest question still. I, I really do. And I, not again, not just for 2024, but for this era of Bears football. Like, if the Bears won a Super Bowl in the next five or six years, is Flus the head coach for that? I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. Hit that sub button. Turn on notifications. We'll continue to keep you guys covered here on Chicago Bears Now.